For more on the shutdown, let's bring in White House Deputy Press Secretary Hogan Gidley. Hogan, good morning to you. Good morning. So the Senate and the House are back in session today. What are the president's expectations for when the Senate takes up his latest proposal? Well, his expectations are clear. He wants an open government and secure borders. And right now, the Senate looks to move on a bill potentially on Thursday for a vote. Uh, we have a humanitarian crisis along our southern border. We have a national security crisis along that border as well. He put forth a common sense plan that used things that the Democrats wanted, uh, included that in the plan, and we want to secure the government. And right now, Democrats refuse to come to the table at all. You just played, uh, or just showed, uh, I should say, uh, a tweet from Nancy Pelosi, and she won't even have a conversation conversation with the president. She was very clear that if we did everything the Democrats wanted, if we voted for every piece they wanted, then they'd talk to us about what we wanted. And when the president put that forward to her as a, as a proposal, fine, I'll open the government and do whatever you want. Will you have a conversation with me about border security? She said one word, no. And that's where we stand right now. If, if, and I keep saying this is a big if, if that Senate accord was to make it through both chambers, does Mitch McConnell have the blessing of the president that he will indeed sign that? Well, that, that's, a, that's a big if. Uh, we don't know what the final bill would look like, but the president has been clear about what he wants. That's why we, we took the initiative and put forth a, a proposal that was signed off on by so many Democrats, at least pieces of it, of what they wanted, up to and included uh, we changed the actual materials that the wall would be made out of. So many Democrats in the past voted for steel barriers. That's why we put the language in there, so that uh, when Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama and Joe Biden and Chuck Schumer all voted for it, uh, they'd be willing to vote for it again. But until this time, uh, there's only really one thing that's changed, and that's Donald Trump is in the White House. They're playing politics with people's lives here. It's dangerous for the country. And there are 800,000 federal workers that by midnight tonight, mm. if a deal is not reached, they are guaranteed to miss a second paycheck in a row. That's unacceptable. Democrats have to come to the table to work with us to fix it. And we know that Nancy Pelosi has made the suggestion to the president that he should not uh, publicly deliver his State of the Union address next Tuesday. What is going to happen, Hogan? Well, we have no announcement at this time, but Nancy Pelosi does not dictate to the president when, or, uh, when he will or will not have a conversation with the American people. The State of the Union address is set up so the president can explain just what's going on with our government and just what's going on around the globe. Uh, the president has an incredible story to tell about how far we've come in this country economically, uh, in a national security capacity. All of those things are impacting Americans positively, and when we have an announcement on that, we'll let you know. If, but but if Nancy Pelosi maintains... is trying to play politics with that with that. Venue. If she maintains uh, the invitation, which she has not completely taken the invitation off the table, but she has made a suggestion that he does not deliver that in the, on the House floor, what's the president's plan B there? What, how would he deliver it or where would he deliver it? Now, there are many ways he can deliver the State of the Union address. I'm not going to get ahead of anything he would announce. But the fact is, you just pointed out, she has not canceled it. She asked us to postpone it. And she did that without any input from national security. In fact, she even said that Secret Service couldn't protect uh, the speech, which is absolutely ridiculous. If the Secret Service can protect the President of the United States on a trip to Iraq, mm -hmm. chances are they can protect the American President in the halls of Congress. You know, we came to expect those those afternoon briefings, press briefings from the White House uh, every day almost. That came to an end. Is there, and the last we checked, there has not been one held this year, Hogan. Is there any plans to start that back up again or see Sarah oh, Sanders back up at the podium? <laughs> she, she's going to come back when she uh, finds uh, a reason to do that because so often it's so funny because the media often tell us that uh, when Sarah Sanders stands right behind me at this podium, why can't we hear from the president? We need to hear more from the president. So we put the president out. He speaks to the media every day. And then they say, why can't we hear from Sarah Sanders? It's kind of ridiculous. You can't win for losing half the time. But the fact is, uh, when the president isn't going up, uh, we, we have a conversation about uh, the message we deliver. Uh, and Sarah Sanders will absolutely be back at this podium talking to the press and, and delivering the message to the American people. But no definitive date on that. I'm sorry? No definitive date yet on that beginning. Uh, oh, no, it's, it, it's not that they've ever stopped. It's just that sometimes we see a need to come to the podium and communicate things, and sometimes we don't. A lot of times when we don't come to the podium, it's because the president has addressed the American mm -hmm. people himself, whether it's on the way to Marine One. I mean, he's the most access, uh, accessible president in history, and, and uh, most of the media in this room will tell you that. So uh, it, it doesn't necessarily mean uh, Sarah Sanders needs to be at this podium every day when the president himself is Got talking it. to the American couple people. A couple other big items to get to. The latest from uh, uh, Covington, the school shut down today after this confrontation 
application. The media uh, portrayed it one way. It was discovered that it wasn't the way that played out. The president feels very passionately about this. He's tweeting. It's captivated the attention of the world. He suggested it could end in a dream. Has he reached out to any of those high school students? Uh, not, not that I'm aware of at this point, but, but this whole situation is emblematic of, of, a, of, a, of a dangerous uh, situation that does exist here. When the media rushes to get it first and not get it right, this is the type of thing that happens out there. I mean, this, these children, uh, th their lives are, are completely affected by this and will be for the foreseeable future. The school, as you mentioned, is shut down, has received bomb threats, have received school shooting threats. And it's one of those instances where you look at one piece of video and everyone jumps to one conclusion. And then when you see the entirety of the video, you realize it wasn't exactly what the initial report said. That's dangerous. So what's the president uh, the thinking on this this morning? What, have you had a chance to talk to him about it? I haven't talked to him directly about this, but he's tweeted this again directly to the American people that this is a situation that's dangerous for those out there because so many in the media, again, jump to get it first and not right. That's something that has to change. You saw that with the BuzzFeed news over the weekend as well. So uh, it's, it's been a rough overall week for the media. When the president says that fake news is the enemy of the people, this is those examples that he right. points to to show that. I've got to ask you uh, finally about this BuzzFeed report. Um... Uh, in the latest on it being shot down by Robert Mueller. We have learned that the president's legal team, Rudy Giuliani, had an exchange with Robert Mueller and his team. What was the extent of the conversations there? I, I don't know the extent of the conversation. Uh, what I can tell you is what I said on, on your program actually last week that I was mocked and derided for, that the president hasn't done anything wrong here. And, of course, the facts bear out that. When, when the special counsel releases a statement and shows the report to be completely false, uh, based on someone who is a convicted felon, defrauded the government out of millions of dollars, and is also a self-admitted liar, you've got a problem when everybody in the country, uh, in the mainstream media, runs with that uh, from morning till night with no corroboration whatsoever, even from the author itself. So that's the situation we find ourselves in. But it's dangerous, was, but, and it's got to change moving forward. But obviously there was this exchange. Rudy Giuliani, the legal team of the president, was in communication with Robert Mueller before he debunked the story. Uh, right, but Rudy Giuliani has addressed all this. I refer you to him for anything further. But the president has maintained the fact he's done nothing wrong here. There's no collusion. Mm -hmm. We've been in this for two years, and I think the American people want this wrapped up. In fact, the majority of them now say that this is seen as a political motivated, a politically motivated uh, witch hunt, right. and that's a problem. All right, we're up against a hard break here. Hogan Gidley, we got to a lot. Thank you. Thanks so much for the time.